What's up, everybody? It's Stephen Williams, founder and president of CreditRepairShop.com. And what I'm going to be doing in today's video, if I can get to it here, this can be what I want to do is I want to, let me see how I can do this. I want to go over uh, the debt that's being released. It's been a very busy week. Uh, uh, as you know, I run several companies, and my attention was needed in some areas that uh, had that I had to give that attention to. But I was answering the comments in the uh, YouTube channel. I was answering those comments, so I didn't forget about everybody. If you hear my computer talking, that's don't pay attention to that. Um, and so, real quick, I'm going to give you some answers or to talk about the questions that were given and then I'm going to get into the debt that's being released. This is very important that you pay attention to this because the credit, I mean the collection agencies are going to be buying this debt and, and like almost all of it is past the statute of limitations so you have to be very careful. The reasons why they'll be willing to invest in getting this is because a lot of people don't know that they can make a mistake and reauthorize a collection that was past statute of limitations. A lot of people are falling into this trap. But first, let's talk about some of the uh, questions that people had. I had a lot of them about court summons. A lot of people are getting the court summons. And usually, this is happening because of one or two reasons. One, it could be a legitimate collection. Uh, from a debt collector, they get hire an attorney, or it was sold to a collection agency, and they hire an attorney in your area to sue you, to go to court, you get a court summons. You have to answer that court summons, but before I talk about how to answer it, let's talk about getting to that point. When you first get a letter or some type of demand for payment from a debt collector or an attorney representing a, an original creditor, you have to respond to that. If you don't respond to it, you're going to start this whole process. The first step of that process is that it's going to go on your credit report. Second part of that is they're going to start calling you. The next part of that is they're going to be allowed to go to court and get a summons. What they do as their, um, uh, what they use as their evidence to back it up for them to be able to go to court or they have it in their back pocket is that they'll say that they reached out to you several different ways and then ultimately uh, they reached out by doing the court some taking you to court and they swear that the debt is yours they got a bill or some stuff uh, saying that it's yours but if you would take care of it at that point see what the whole what all the options are going to be if it's either past statute of limitations or it was not the correct balance that you owed, or you owe it and then you just figure out a way that you can do a settlement before getting it to having a summons. These are all options that are available to you, but if it gets to be a summons, you have to answer the summons or you're setting that up. Hold on. All right, sorry about that. My daughter and son-in-law had to grab some paperwork from me. Uh, so when you get that summons you have to answer that summons if you don't you're setting yourself up into a bad situation now uh one person said that when they re the first thing is let's talk about the summons they're going to be these they look like just statements but they're actually questions they're asking you questions they're like they'll say is this your name and you live at this address and you're like thinking i don't have to answer that that i live at the address you actually do have to answer it. The way that I tell people to do it is to just say that I do not dispute. So you'll have, if they say this is your name and you live at this address, you put your answer number one, the answer number one, I do not dispute it. Number two, they might say uh, you had a credit card with this company. I don't dispute it. Next one is going to get, and in a way I see this as like they're setting you up for something. Because they get you, yeah, you know, yeah, I love that address. Yeah, I had that credit card. Yeah, I did. It, it, like all these yeses, and then they start getting to the meat and potatoes, which is they're going to say you had this balance. That's where you need to 
if it's not what you remember, what you recall, is that that's where you're going to dispute the amounts right there, that you don't recall those amounts being that amount. And then that's where you're going to ask them to do a, a full validation. A lot of people, if they haven't done the, the full validation before that period, or they've tried to do it and then the debt collector didn't respond, that is the time that you can do another full validation and get the information that you want. Or you're going to end up going to court, and then you're going to be able to ask the judge to get you that information so you can get all the details and know if you're going to end up having to pay that debt. If they don't provide all the stuff, they need to get there. You, you can ask for the original contract. You can ask for the balances. You can ask for all of your charges with the signature proven that you wanted those charges to be uh, charged. They have to maintain all of that documentation. And what we see is that there's a problem when it goes to, when it's sold to a debt collection company from the original creditor, the information is not transmitted because that, all of this stuff is done digital. And a lot of times that stuff is just not sent over. And if it's not sent over, they can't prove that you owe the debt. So you need to be prepared to either ask for it in court with your your answers and you need to send those answers to the court and you need to also send those answers to the attorney one of the people that posted a comment here on youtube about their court summons was they said that they tried to do it in the validation process and the debt collector kept disregarding it and they were asking me well what should they do next they should do a validation again send it certified mail this time and then when the court summons comes and you do the the uh when you respond to the court summons then you have the proof that you did ask them for the validation but you still have to do the same thing over again when you do the court summons so make sure that you respond to the court summons in the the uh time frame that they have on the uh summons letter and you also have to send it to the judge and you have to send it to the debt collector or the original creditor. So now let's get into the debt collections that's being sold on the market. This is, I, I can't mention the lender's name because they'll block the video on here on YouTube, but this is a uh, department store credit card. It's a, a group of stores. The principal amount is $8.9 million. The charge-off date on all of this debt was 2008, so 100% of this debt is past statute of limitations. And the only way that they would be able to collect on this debt is if you didn't respond to the 30-day letter that they mailed to you, and then you let them do a court summons and take you to court, and they get a default judgment. That would be the only way that any of these debts could be collected on because for all 50 states it's past the statute of limitations for contract law so if you get any debt from any company or old credit card or department store credit card that's what these are the department store credit card if you get any collection letter from a debt collector the first thing you should do is look on your credit reports and if you don't have your credit reports go to the link below or go to the website your the number three scores dot com and you can get all three credit reports because everything starts right there with knowing when a charge off was first put on your credit so if it's past the statute of limitations uh, and it could potentially be one of these accounts there's over 2600 accounts that's going to be released uh, it could be past statute of limitations and all you have to do is notify them that it's past statute of limitations for your state and that you want them to cease all collection activities and if they don't you're going to notify the proper authorities which is your state attorney general's office and you should put that on the letter in the cc at the bottom under your signature also that'll stop them from coming after you and you do need to save that document because they might sell it to another debt collector. The next one that we had was payday loans. 
and these were charged off in 2014 so you'll have to check to see if it's past the statute of limitations for your state you can go to our website thecreditrepairshop.com and the link is below on this video and you can search on my blog to see when the statute of, what is the statute of limitations for contract law in your state uh, for some states this might still be a valid debt but for a lot of states it's not and again it's uh 1.1 1 .1 million dollars being released 516 accounts and the average account is 2100 dollars and these were payday loans the next one is a group of jewelry store lenders we had a big one uh, not too long ago, but this one here is 1,700 accounts, $1.6 million. Charge off date is 2012, so this is past statute of limitations for all states. Average account, $938. So this is probably the smaller jewelry stores that were uh, doing the low or the, the less than good credit type loans, because these are not high balances uh, on these cards and, and I'm looking at the list here they have clients in every state the biggest state that I see that they have clients in is Texas uh, Philadelphia North Carolina Florida and California and Alabama uh, so if you live in any of those states, there's a bunch of accounts. They're going to be sending that that 30-day uh, letter requesting that you pay the debt, and you need to be prepared to look on your credit reports and see when the original charge-off date was. It doesn't matter what they're saying. You need to look at the original charge-off date from that uh, original creditor, and, uh, and so you can see if it's past the statute of limitations. And so if you don't have your credit reports, go to the website, your, the number three scores.com. The link is below this video because you need to get that information. It can save you a lot of money. Those reports uh, only cost $27 and th these accounts average $938. So you can weigh the difference on if you end up having to pay that debt when you don't have to pay it just because you didn't respond to it. So I'd like to thank everybody for watching the videos. Make sure that you subscribe to our channel, share it with your friends and family, and tell other people about it. Uh, again, if you need to uh, need help with your credit, visit the link below, thecreditrepairshop.com. And if you need your credit reports and scores, uh, go to your, the number three, scores.com. Both of those links are below. And also make sure to post your comments and questions. Thanks a lot.